Dear viewers, these days lot of youngsters practice financial planning as a do it yourself model. In this episode I am going to talk to you about why do it yourself is not such a good idea for a large majority of people. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan but investment consultant and a financial planner. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, I have been in the practicing line for many, many, many years. I have written financial plans, I have practiced, I have helped lot majority of people across the globe in their financial planning exercise. When we started this NRI Money Clinic, a lot of do-it-yourself have contacted us, asked us to check whether what they are doing is right or wrong. I knew what was the problem that is going to come when they send me the portfolios. I checked and I can tell you for sure a large majority of people who thought that do-it-yourself is the best model to be in have completely messed up their portfolios. This is the hard reality. So I just thought why not speak from this forum now and say why do-it-yourself is not a good idea for a large majority of people who are practicing this. Does it mean to say that nobody is doing right? I don't mean to say that. But when I analyze the portfolios, there are hardly a very few. You can count them on the fingertips. Extremely minuscule number of people have got it right. For most people, the do-it-yourself model is not something that they can really cope up with. If you don't believe, let me talk to you in detail in this particular episode now. Why do-it-yourself is not a good model for many? Here is the reason number one. Your emotions will spoil the sports. To be successful in the financial planning exercise, more than the knowledge, it is the ability to conquer your emotions that is the most basic trait that you should be having. You should inculcate that habit of staying between fear and greed. But what happens in real life? Either you will become a victim of fear or you will become a victim of greed. If something is doing very well, if there is a momentum, you just don't bother to check what is that you are betting, what can go wrong and you go and latch on to that and at some point of time it will become too much of it and it will lose its value. That's the price you are paying for the greed. A lot many people think something is too dangerous and they think they lose money and they get struck with fear and they will not venture what they really need to be doing. See when the markets are falling and when they are supposed to do a certain thing they will do the opposite of it. They think markets will fall further on, they get stuck with fear, they don't act on time as a result they don't get the required result. So unless you have conquered your emotions both the fear and the greed and learn a technique to stay between fear and greed, do it yourself will not work out for you. One powerful reason why do it yourself investors fail miserably is because they try to chase the return. What do they do? They check on the Google, they see which fund is doing well, which stock is doing well, how much return it has given and they think the past will continue into the future and they latch on to these investment. Chasing the returns is a definite recipe for failure. When your focus is on return, make sure you will not get it. If chasing the return is not something which will help you, what is the right thing? The right thing is setting up the proper processes. Your returns should be a byproduct of your process. Your focus should be on putting the right process in place. It is not chasing the return. You can't invest in something looking at its return, what it can do. Instead of that, you should know what it can do for you in future. I'll tell you with the help of an example here. Now, financial planning or investing exercise is something like an agriculture. You have to prepare the ground well. You have to wait for proper climatic conditions to be there. You should play your part, you should sow the seeds at the right time and you, sh you should make sure that they get the required protection, they get the required nutrients, they get the required time. Then only the crop will come. 
you cannot say that my crop will give me so much of a returns over a period of time. The returns you get from the agriculture depends on the climatic conditions, it depends on the soil fertility, it depends on the supply uh, that comes into the market and your ability to hold on to the products that you have grown for a longer period of time. Your financial planning, your investment exercise can't be different from this. Your focus should be on the process and I can tell for sure that 99% of the people miss this part of the financial planning putting process in place. What should I do? What should I buy? What should be my proportion? What should I do when? How should I change it if things were not going to happen? What is the thing first I should expect out of this thing? Have I set up my expectation? What is the risk that I'm going to take? If risk were to play out, how things will pan out for me? Is it an acceptable outcome? Unless this process is put into place in minute detail, you can be literally certain that the returns will not come in. Returns in a well-drafted process is a byproduct of how you set up the process. At do-it-yourself, investors completely miss on the process part of this investment exercise. Do-it-yourself investors want to invest in something which gives them the highest rate of return. They want to invest in something which has the least cost. Mark my words, it is impossible to get the highest rate of return at all times. It is impossible to put all your money in something which gives you the highest rate of return. Equally certain is that it is impossible for you to avoid a product which has the highest expense ratio. You are confused? I will tell you with the help of an example. Now, the product which gives you the highest rate of return is a lottery ticket. You do get a prize if you hit the number right, but the probability of you getting that number is a minuscule one. So when you know that you are going to get the return, you can't expose a large amount of your money on buying the lottery ticket. So you know that you are going to get the highest return, but you can't use that fully. Likewise, the product which has the highest expense ratio is a bank fixed deposit. You will not believe the expense ratio in a bank fixed deposit could be anywhere from 3 to 4 percent from bank to bank. Bank gives you an FD rate of interest. Banks lends money to the borrowers on the other side. The difference between the borrowing cost of the bank and the lending rate for its borrowers is called as the net interest margin. This is the true expense ratio of a bank FD. And you will be surprised to see the expense ratio in a bank FD is 3 to 4 percent. So you know it's the most expensive product, but still you will be forced to use the bank fixed deposit. So don't be under the impression that you can always buy the best highest yielding product or you can avoid completely the product which has the highest expense ratio. Now the judgment is how will I use which product in which proportion that is the wisdom part of it. When I ask many people why do you want to go direct why do you want to do it yourself? Why don't you outsource it to some financial planner or some professional? The answer they give is, we want to save on the cost. If you want to save on the cost, that's fine. There is a small difference between the direct schemes of a mutual fund and the regular schemes which will come through a distributor or through a financial planner. That difference is 0.5 to 0.6. Now, if your intention is only to save on the cost, then there are things which you can do other than the mutual funds itself. For example, you can buy ETFs which are much cheaper than the mutual funds itself. You can buy direct stocks. You don't even have to pay the cost which comes with an ETFs also. So if your idea is to reduce the cost, there is a world which is beyond the direct mutual funds as well. There is one more point that you have to look into now. That point is, have you any time calculated what could be the cost of your mistake? If you picked up the wrong scheme and you lost money, or if it did not participate in the market like the way it should participate, what could be the lost opportunity on that? Or you blended schemes in such a way that the result is suboptimal. Some funds performed, some firms did not perform, and something lost money. And when you club everything, it can give rise to a suboptimal result. 
So while you calculate the cost which can be paid to a financial planner or the difference between a direct and mutual fund, it is not possible for you to calculate what is going to be the cost of doing a wrong thing or not doing so right, creating the suboptimal portfolios. Mark my words, if you are working with a good financial planner, his one advice during the entire 10 year period can make you so much of a money than the cost that comes with the regular funds. So next time when you look at a do-it-yourself model with an idea to save cost, look at the points that I've already told you. The cost of doing the mistakes, cost of creating portfolios in a suboptimal way, all these things can spoil your sports. Do-it-yourself investors get lured by the extrapolation effect. There are a lot of YouTubes which tell by uh, going direct, you will be able to save so many lakhs of rupees over a 30 year period, 25 year period, and you can save so much of a money. I don't say that they are wrong, they are right. But is it an implementable formula? No, I can tell that for sure. Look at the history of mutual funds. Hardly people stay invested for longer periods of time. People stay invested for three years, five years. Even the do-it-yourself investors don't stick to one single plan for a long period of time. They wait for some time, they become impatient, they walk out of it, they get into something, they try to chase returns as a result of whatever the extrapolation they think of, the benefit that can come for them will not work in their favor. In the first place, extrapolation itself is a wrong thing to do. We don't do these things in our everyday life. For example, I can tell you that you are paying, let's say, 2000 rupees to your maid every month. Will you calculate how much will I pay over a 30 period to a maid and I'm going to lose so many lakhs of rupees. Instead of that, I will do it myself. You will not do it. You may keep a cook at home. You may prepare coffee at home. You will also go out and drink coffee. And when you do all these things, there is an extra cost that comes with it, which is because of the service aspect of it. You have to pay somebody else. You will see this from a point of view of convenience and what benefit it can give you rather than on extrapolation effect. So do not extrapolate how much money you are going to save over 20, 30 years of time. Instead think what convenience it can add for you. Do you have time for all these things? If you don't have the time for all these things, this can become a point of convenience. Likewise, instead of doing mistakes without sufficient enough knowledge or the wisdom how to handle it, it makes sense for you to go for the financial planners or the engage the services of somebody in this line than to do it yourself. Finance industry is advisor driven. When you do it yourself, you are all alone. You have nobody to fall back on. You can't consult anyone. You can watch the television channels. You can read through the newspapers and whatever that you get on the internet, you and that information. But mark my words, it is a dynamic field and everybody needs to be advised in this particular field. I'm a practicing financial planner myself. I need to be advised. I can't say that I know everything. We need to be briefed on what's happening. There is so much of an information coming across the globe, day in and day out. There is somebody who has to filter it and bring it to our notice, this is what's happening. It's not only for me, for everybody in this line, they need to be advised. Finance minister has to be advised. The Reserve Bank governor has to be advised. The fund managers need to be advised. So this financial industry is completely advisor driven. So unless you are advised properly what needs to be done and when, the chances of you doing it the right way remains extremely remote. Not many people can digest the financial knowledge. The first question that you have to ask here is, do I have the requisite knowledge to understand these financial affairs? How will the bonds work? How will the equity markets work? What happens when the inflation comes in? When the bull markets happen, what next will happen? How will a bear market end? What could be the cycles? What could be the interplay between different things here? All these knowledge is required. Do you have the requisite knowledge? If you think you do not have the requisite knowledge, then probably do it yourself 
is not a good model that can work for you. Do it yourself investors should also ask, do I have time? This is not your primary job. You may be doing it for the sake of planning your finances. You may be doing it out of your passion or you are just doing it because somebody else is doing it. The question here is, you have a job or a business to pursue. You also have a family. You have your private time as well. Do you have extra time to look after all these things? If you do not have sufficient enough time to monitor all these things, look after all these things, then probably do it yourself is not a good idea for you as well. As a do it yourself investor, you may be having the requisite knowledge. You may still have the time. The next ingredient that you need is the experience the experience of working in this financial field for longer periods of time. The months, years you add in this field can give you immense knowledge. But for a starter who has come here for with a do-it-yourself model, the key ingredient which will be missing will be this experience. Experience can come only over a period of time. Either you learn through your own mistakes or you work with somebody who is well experienced in this line. So if you do not have proper experience of things, then probably do it yourself is not a good model which can work for you. Dear viewers, if you think do it yourself model if you are following and if it is not working well for you, it is time that you seek the opinion of a financial planner. If you have a financial planner in your know-how, please take their help. If you are looking to engage the services of a financial planner, you can as well consider our services. Our number is shown here on the screens. Through a WhatsApp message, you can reach to us and you can make best use of the financial planning services offered by us. Dear viewers, if the topic that I discussed today added some value to you, please like this video. If you are a person who is watching this channel for the first time, or if you are yet to subscribe for the, this channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I will be back with you with yet another topic on yet another video very, very soon. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.